Hi, my name is Carl Bergren. I'm an electrical engineering professor at MIT, and I'm going to talk about microlithography briefly. Microlithography is an important industrial process in integrated circuit manufacturing, but it's also important in research uh, for making nano devices and micro devices. Things like optical waveguides, MEM structures, photon detectors, photovoltaic devices, all kinds of things uh, use microlithography. So I just want to give the general idea, first of all, which is that you start with some kind of a substrate, and on the substrate there's a thin film, that might be an insulator, might be a metal, might be a semiconductor, and on top of the thin film you have a layer, which is typically a polymer, called a resist. This is a cross-section, so from the top down there's really not much to see. You would just see the resist on the thin film. And uh, the lithography step is quite straightforward. Uh, you have some type of radiation that comes in uh, that is typically patterned, so the radiation only is incident on certain regions. And examples would be, say, uh, UV light, or electrons, or ions, or x-rays. In fact, people have uh, even used mechanical styluses to rub uh, at the resist. And so the consequence of essentially all of these methods is that there's some change to the resist, typically a physical change representing some chemical difference between the exposed and the unexposed regions. There's a second step, which is critical, which is called the development step. And in the development step, the resist is removed in the regions where it was exposed for what's called positive tone resist. So we're going to use that example. And where it was exposed, the resist is removed. So there's those arrows, that's the resist going away. And that's called positive tone resist. And that development process is typically a, a wet process meaning that it's performed in a liquid and there is a negative tone resist where the resist would remain where it was exposed and it would go away everywhere else but just for the sake of simplicity we'll choose the positive tone case to describe here and that's basically the lithographic process at that point you have a pattern with resist there's actually a lot of things you could do to try to create a function in this uh, material now but uh, the case I'm going to talk about is a simple etch process. So a simple etch process, which could be uh, wet, or it could be done uh, in a plasma, or it could be done just by exposing it to a beam of energetic ions. Uh, in that process, you end up removing the thin film material. You might actually remove a little bit of the substrate as well underlying it. I'm not going to draw that part of it, but a little bit of the substrate might be removed. And of course some of the resist might be removed. You just have to be careful not to remove all of the resist. And then you'd start to attack your thin film. And it's called a resist, obviously, because it resists this etch process. So there's my thin film going away. Uh, now your thin film is patterned, in principle you could form a function. You probably don't want this polymer sticking around on top of everything, so you want to remove that polymer. And you do that with yet one more step, uh, which is called the strip step. And it can also be either a wet step or a plasma step. And in that strip, uh, or after that strip, you're left with your substrate, of course and your pattern thin film and now your resist is gone. So from the top this pattern thin film is going to look like some wires or uh, 
interconnected structure is something that is going to perform the function that you desired. You might have to repeat this several times. You might have to now put another material down on top of it and put resist on top of that material and expose it with lithography and etch it and build structures up one at a time. And that process of building structures up is re referred to as the planar fabrication process. So there's a lot more detail than I was able to go into uh, right now. Well, hopefully we'll uh, work through some of those details in future videos. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to put them as questions down below. Don't be shy, and I would be very happy to answer them for you.